We now come to a really fun part of this video series on data visualizations, where we admit to ourselves that we are not been making all of these images in a vacuum or for robots. We're making them for other people. And these are people you care about. These are people you want to convince. These are people that you want to you educate. And these are people with whom you want to have a conversation about the data set and make decisions together. And so when you are making a plot, you really should be thinking about telling a story. And when you're telling a story, I think one of the biggest things to, to, to keep an eye on is that the most salient thing, the thing that you want everyone to pay attention to, should be the most obvious thing that comes out, visually speaking. The most important thing should be the most obvious thing. I'm going to illustrate this with a map um, that is a London Underground map from 1908. And in this map, you see the locations of all of the underground stations. And it's overlaid on top of a, top, um, a topographical map that shows all of the surface roads and all, all the rivers and all the towns and stuff like that. Now, the reason that we don't make maps like this before anymore um, of, of, of the London Underground is because this has a lot of deficits. It doesn't tell you easily and straightforwardly the things you actually want to know, like what station do I get on in the middle so I can transfer to the red line to this other place. That, that information is really obscure. But it's giving you extra information you may not actually care about, like where a station is relative to the river. Right? If you're actually on the train, that might not be what you're focusing on at the moment. So shortly after this map, and everyone being really frustrated with this type of map, a different type of map was made of the London Underground. And it looks like this. So this is the birth of the modern uh, underground map of the kind that we see um, for, for train stations um, in big cities all around the world. And it has the virtue that even though it obscures some information, it doesn't tell you in space where all of these different stations actually are, it tells you really, really clearly what their relationship to each other are in the context of you sitting on the train deciding where you want to get on and off. It also emphasizes that there is a density of train stations that are right in the middle of town, and so it gives extra space to that, uh, to that part of town at the cost of giving less space to the, to the outlying regions. And that is appropriate because the majority of people are going to be getting on and off their trains in the middle of town. And so this visualization of this data wins from the perspective of conveying the information really quickly and easily. And it's OK, the other lesson I want to emphasize, it's OK to do that sometimes at the cost of de-emphasizing and making some other information more obscure. So in this case, we're losing like exact shape of the river, and we don't really know where these outlying stations actually are. But that's OK, because when you're on the train, that is not the information that is most important for you at that moment. Let me show you another visualization that I found to be really interesting, uh, which is this really, really neat map that doesn't have a lot of colors. It's not a fancy map, but it says something really clearly and it conveys a message. So this is a map um, made uh, for the frequency of the search word diet in the Google search engine. And what you're seeing here is as a function of the number of days in a year, in a calendar year, are, is the word diet coming up all around the world more often or less often than usual. And this tells actually a remarkably clear story. Right? So the, the times in which there is a huge spike in how often people around the world are searching for the world diet is, not surprisingly, after New Year's Day, and it peaks in January 2nd. The troughs are also equally interesting. So people are less likely to be searching for this term right around the holiday season. And in the United States, right before, right before Independence Day and on Valentine's Day. And so the simple visualization is really strikingly clear. And without a lot of explanation, I think most of us can look at a visualization like this and learn something from it. So another thing that I wanted to emphasize in the storytelling section is the message trumps beauty. There's a lot of fancy tools out there that will make absolutely gorgeous graphics. Nice shading, really nice lines, right? But you don't want to do that at the cost of losing the message. Remember, this is about storytelling, not impressing people with how fancy your data visualization skills are. So this is a visualization that was made um, that compares the press attention versus the scientific evidence for, how, uh, for autism risk. And I want to emphasize that there's no fancy graphics, no fancy colors. But it's extraordinarily clear if you read through it in communicating the mismatch between the actual risk of autism, things that are known to, um, to, to increase the risk of autism in reality based on scientific evidence versus the press coverage on each of these topics. And so you can see that by just conveying information clearly, you can take 
a lot away from the visualization. You don't have to go for the, the fanciest ones, the most colorful ones, the most eye-catching ones. Really focus on the message. What is the message that you want to convey? In this particular case, what they're wanting to convey is that the thing that, uh, that gets a lot of press attention is whether or not there's a link between vaccination and autism. And this is covered a lot in the press. Whereas there's no evidence in the scientific literature that vaccination causes autism, and there is a lot of evidence that these things cause autism, but they get disproportionately very, very little coverage in the press. And so this mismatch is something that becomes really obvious when you have a data visualization like this, and you didn't need to have any fancy graphics or visualizations or animations to convey it.